Welcome to our weekly dementia blog. My name is Dr. David Hutchings, and these are being sponsored by SpectraMed. Uh, we are extremely excited by week over week to see how many views that we're getting on our dementia blogs, uh, whether it's on the LinkedIn um, site or Facebook or other social media platforms. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, I decided to kind of change topics a little bit this week based on a lot of questions that I was getting last week at a support group for frontal temporal lobe dementia. I was uh, blessed to be able to do a um, uh, the speaker at a frontal temporal lobe dementia support group hosted by Vanderbilt last week, and I decided to talk about the severity levels of dementia. Uh, so we've been talking about Alzheimer's, but we're going to talk about dementia as a whole right now. Um, but staging and understanding the different levels of severity are key. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to talk about from stage one to four, and then next week we'll cover stages five through seven. So that tells you that there is a total of seven stages of severity when we talk about dementia. We've noted in the previous blog there are many forms of dementia and the type of uh, dementia that you have, uh, the individual has, so the, the actual diagnosing is key, um, not only for uh, assessment and treatment and pharmacological um, uh, approaches, but also just to understand how this thing is going to progress and also the speed of progression. So the treatment does change based on this type of dementia that we're dealing with. But it is, it is critical that we have dementia staging to figure out exactly not what necessarily the, the individual cannot do, but what are they still able to do. And so that allows us to understand too, if we're at a stage three, this is what happens at stage four, or if we're at stage five, this is what's coming next. So it helps in planning um, for the patient for better quality of life and better care. So as we look at dementia staging, as I mentioned, there are seven stages, one being um, like no subject, no cognitive or memory impairment all the way to stage seven, which is gonna be profound. So let's talk about stages one through four today. Stage number one is what we call NCI, which is no cognitive impairment. That's just basically, there's no problems noted with memory. If there are, it's very age-related um, and no, no, no problems with planning activities or just your daily life. So no cognitive impairment would be stage one. <clears throat> As we move into stage two, it's what we call SCI, which is a subjective cognitive impairment. Now, this is more age-related, and we talked about before, too, is we don't have memory problems as we get age, older, we just have slower processing. So in an in a SCI, or a subjective cognitive impairment, these patients may have troubles, you know, remembering names or, um, you know, maybe walking into a room and forget why you walk in there, but just, just being kind of forgetful, but nothing to be very concerned about that it's really impacting a person's daily life. So that's where we have SCI. The next is we move into what we call MCI, which is stage three, which is mild cognitive impairment. Now stages one through three are what are commonly known as pre-dementia. I do not like the terms pre-dementia because as we look into stages one through three, we may not even have a dementia at all. We may have a thyroid deficiency. We might have vitamin B12 insufficiencies. We could have depression issues. There's a multitude of things that can cause memory issues in these stages and not actually be a progressive neurological dementia. So in stage three, we have mild cognitive impairment, and this is where we have that the difficulties are, are certainly more noticeable. Um, individuals may be becoming lost, maybe if they're going to church, their grocery store, uh, may be becoming lost sometimes in, in familiar settings, misplacing objects, um, uh, valuable objects. So it's normal to misplace your keys, but maybe it's not normal to find them uh, maybe uh, in the refrigerator or somewhere that you would not normally have them. Uh, so mild cognitive impairment is, is much more noticeable, but again, not all patients with mild cognitive impairment develop an actual progressive dementia, but mild cognitive impairment is, is a very serious condition, and we do see um, a high percentage of those patients do develop uh, progressive dementias. And then once we get to stage four, this is where we actually have mild dementia, or it's also called moderate cognitive impairment. Uh, they have more decreased knowledge of current events, personal events. They have maybe can't recall what they did the past weekend. Um, both stages three and four, and I've mentioned this before, 
are almost hallmark. We see paranoia. Um, we also see definitely difficulty handling finances. Um, and as I say that, I hope some of the people viewing this uh, will take note of that because that's one of the big one of the biggest things I see is difficulty old uh, managing their finances or maybe even thinking that um, people are actually taking money from them. Um, also in stage four, we have the advanced cognitive processes begin to um, have a lot more difficulty. It may be um, doing laundry, it may be uh, cooking a meal, it could be planning you know, travel, something that takes a lot of cognitive thought or a lot more difficulty here with these patients. You know, in these blogs, we have really outlined that m dementia impacts more than just memory and remembering things. It impacts all physical and mental abilities. And so as we go into next week and talk about stages five through seven, we're really going to start to see that when we'll talk more about the physical pieces where we see decreased um, ability to walk and eat and swallow and, and speak and all these things that um, we do every single day and take granted for that. Um, so again, we're really excited about these blogs. We're really excited about the attention they've been receiving, the amount of questions that we're getting um, on not just um, here in the United States, but all over the country and all over the world. We're starting to get a lot of, a lot of great questions and comments. So um, please visit Spectrum Med's website. Um, follow the blog every single week. And if you want a topic, then uh, you can reach out to us clinically. We also take clinical questions. Um, that you can go to our website and actually submit a question uh, clinical, whether it can be about your only family member or it can also be um, about a patient of yours. So those questions come directly to me. So um, again, look forward to next week and I hope everybody is out there is staying healthy and thank you and, and God bless.